Dopant diffusion is not the only way to get dopants into the interior of a semiconductor. Ion implantation can be a much better way. It also allows you to implant dopants deep under the surface in a, in a region beneath a region where you don't want those dopants. It's used oftentimes in tandem with diffusion. So you'll have an implantation step followed by a heat treating diffusion step. The ions are the dopants. You have a beam of boron if you want to deposit boron in your silicon. The energy will be in a range of 300 electron volts to 5 MeV. That is the kinetic energy of the individual ions. And that's actually not incredibly high. It's much higher than thermal. So thermal ions have an energy of 0.026 electron volts. So way above thermal. You can have hundreds of MeV ions in a suitably designed particle accelerator. But this is the range that's used, nice and low, up no, no higher than 5 MeV, in order to avoid damaging the crystal that you're implanting the ions into. And I'll talk a little bit about that damage that, that can happen and, and how it's repaired. But something to keep in mind is that the energy is kept low to control the damage and to implant at a low depth. For example, deposition ranges, it says here, from 10 nanometers to 10 microns. And this is the ion beam range that typically enables that kind of depth. And so the ion beam collides with the surface and the ions implant uh, somewhere inside. The beam will have a certain intensity to it. There's a certain fluence. There'll be so many uh, ions uh, uh, passing per square centimeter of that beam per, per second. Dose is measured by how many ions have struck the surface per unit area throughout exposure to the beam. For different purposes, you need different doses. So if you need to, say, prepare the channel in order to get the threshold voltage where you want it to be, you need to control the doping level anywhere from 0 to 10 to the 19th ions. So you'll have a pretty high ion dose than the 24th ions per square centimeter. Suppose you want to make a silicon dioxide layer where every silicon needs to be converted to silicon dioxide. Then you have to hit it with an ion beam of oxygen it needs to have a very high fluence, 10, 10 to the 28th ions per square centimeter, because every last silicon needs to be engaged with those oxygens in order to make bulk silicon dioxide. If you need your silicon dioxide at the surface, you simply uh, heat up the, 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 the semiconductor and you know, thermalize it and let the uh, oxide layer grow. But when you need the oxide layer to be deep inside, how do you get it there? By sending in ions. You saw the animation, you know, the ions have a stopping place. It depends on how high their energy is. The higher the energy, the deeper in the side they are before they stop. So you can control where you put that internal layer by controlling the energy. How many implantations is an issue. You saw in the, the lecture, I think the first lecture I gave in this chapter, a block diagram of a process to prepare a microchip. You know, there were several maskings and there were several implantations. Well, if you're actually going to make a full all-out CMOS chip, apparently you need about 15 implant steps per wafer. And to make flash memory, it takes about twice that many, and advanced chips are somewhere between that. Okay, so a lot of implant steps. Now let's talk about the important thing, which is what happens to the ion after it has arrived inside the material. It has a stopping place, but that stopping place isn't one spot. There is a range of stopping areas. So this is the dopant density as a function of the depth below the surface. So here are the surfaces at zero at the origin. And you want to have your implantations occurring at some distance we call R sub P, the projected range, beneath the surface. Oh, well, they'll stop there, but with a, with a distribution. A distribution is referred to as a straggle sigma sub p. So you have a certain range. You can only uh, make so thin of a deposition layer. And that straggle is in both the, the forward direction that the ions are, are moving inside the material, the z direction, and the lateral direction, you know, the x and y direction. And you end up having two kinds of straggle, the projected range straggle, sigma sub p, as well as the transverse or lateral straggle, the T is for transverse, sigma sub T. So there's a, a range. If you wanted your beam to end up right there, it's going to end up in a 
box around there of dimension sigma sub p by sigma sub t as the most likely dimensions. So you do have this Gaussian distribution, this Gaussian distribution of ion density versus depth. When the ion is inside of the material, it eventually comes to a stop because it collides with nuclei. It passes a long way. So here I have the ion. It just arrived at the surface, and now it's going deep into the surface. It doesn't hit any nuclei for a while. At the energy that we are using, a few MeV, at that energy, the ions really will do most of the electron scattering until they hit a nucleus head on. And so once they collide with a crystalline nucleus, a silicon nucleus, yeah, they will displace that nucleus, and they will go off in some other direction, but eventually then they come to stop. And you hope it's a, a single scattering event. At low enough energy, uh, I think the probability of that becomes a lot higher. And the nucleus you know, goes off in this direction. It might strike another nucleus, that secondary scattering, and that will be permanent damage. And so you might end up with, you know, one ion implanted, but several of these little damage sites from nuclei that moved and scattered other nuclei. And so yeah, it has to be repaired, and it's repaired with a heat treatment step called annealing. You get all done with all this, and then you raise the temperature of the substrate, and these ions at elevated temperature will find their way back to their, their appropriate crystal lattice. They'll find an empty empty site. Otherwise you have a bunch of point defects you know, from these nuclei that have been moved out, but at high temperature point defects heal themselves. You don't get columnar defects. A columnar defect is when that ion is, is cruising through the material, hitting nuclei out of the way, making a column of defects and making a path, leaving a, leaving a, a trail behind it. You don't get that. It's only electron scattering along here. But then they, they finally lose energy through, through electron scattering. Then finally they get to an energy where they can interact with a nucleus. And um, uh, yeah, and they make this yeah tree of disorder that has to be repaired. And it's the centroid of that tree of disorder, which is where you hope the ion ended up, is R sub P, the projected depth. Okay, so uh, that's that's it for uh, ion implantation for now. So at least that way you have a sense of what I'm talking about when I talk about ion implantation of dopants.